everybody. Let's uh, begin with this uh, Congress and I'm very happy to introduce the member of the, of the table. I will, give, I will be giving the, the floor to each of the participants very briefly. Each one will, will tell some words about his or her contribution and expectancies on, on, the, on the meeting. Of course, we all welcome you and express our gratitude to your participation. And uh, the table is under the presidency of the mayor of Avila, uh, Miguel Angel Garcia. And uh, there are other authorities. And the uh, first one to, to talk today will be, as you can see there, I think, yeah, Jose Jimenez. Uh, he's the director general of environment and forestry policy of the Ministry of uh, Environment and uh, well, environment in general in Spain. And please, Jose Jimenez, when, when you want, you have the floor. Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt that we are living in a knowledge based society. In this context, all public policies and decisions must be based on the best scientific knowledge and data. Data compilation, assessment and comparison are the best tools for both policy formulation and evaluation. Scientific knowledge can provide a valuable input for the design of new policies and can even help to develop future projections to better understand the impacts of different policy options. This principle of science-focused policies is of particular importance when developing policies for the conservation and management of biodiversity. Biodiversity policies should be based on the best available information. Indeed, if we want our policies to be efficient and provide real solutions for our needs, we have to build on credible scientific information and take into consideration scientific advances and data. In Spain, relevant scientific research on biodiversity has been developed since the 19th century. Uh, this research work uh, has provided relevant information and knowledge of the state and trends of our natural capital. For example, the Spanish forestry map the Spanish forestry inventory and the inventory of soil erosion are only some examples of tools that provide relevant scientific information that help the development of an assessment of biodiversity conservation policies. The Ministry of Environment and Rural and Marine Affairs elaborate since more than one decade ago several national inventories and monitoring programs about fauna and flora. However, the knowledge on biodiversity needs to be constantly complete and updated. For this reason, the Spanish Law 42, 2007, created the Spanish Inventory on Natural Heritage and Biodiversity in order to provide a better knowledge and understanding of our country's biodiversity as a tool for its conservation, restoration, and sustainable use. This inventory will integrate all available information on biodiversity for providing an update and objective knowledge of its status, trends, and threats. This will reinforce the scientific foundation of public policies on biodiversity protection while contributing to the dissemination of information on biodiversity values to the whole society. During the last three decades, good progress has been made in improving the biodiversity knowledge based to contribute the policy formulation and assessment with up-to-date scientific data and information. However, research on biodiversity is not always coherent with the main needs and knowledge gaps of policymakers. Scientific research activities should better respond to the needs for policy formulation and management measures. On the other hand, 
transfer and dissemination of research result toward all interest stakeholders should be improved. Final users of research outcome should include both policymakers and the general public. The recently adopted strategic plan for natural heritage and biodiversity takes note of these needs. One of its core principles highlights that decision making should be based on the best available knowledge and scientific information and the interaction between the scientific sector and the policy maker should be enhanced. With this aim, the strategic plans include a range of action for implementing the Spanish Inventory on Natural Heritage and Biodiversity and for enhancing the dissemination of its information. It also contains actions for ensuring that biodiversity research and innovation better respond to the real needs for its conservation, restoration and sustainable management. For example, biodiversity issues will be enhanced as one of the priorities for the future strategic plan for scientific research and technology. A specific research project on the causes of biodiversity loss and on biodiversity management tools, as well as scientific studies on economic evaluation of biodiversity, will be promoted. At the international level, it has, it has also been recognized that there is a need to reinforce the interconnection between the science and the policy making process so that the best scientific information is considered in policy and management decisions. Governments of more than 90 states agreed in June 2010 on the need to establish a new intergovernmental science policy platform on biodiversity and ecosystem services, IPBES. As a conclusion, I would like to highlight the need to ensure that any policy decision on biodiversity conservation and management should be based on the best available information. We need to strengthen the links between biodiversity research and policy making to promote a more policy oriented research and to improve the dissemination and availability of scientific information and data. This is how we all, scientists, policy makers, and all stakeholders can contribute to our common goal of protecting our valuable nature. Thank you very much. Thank you for your words. And now it's time for Mr. Jose Angel Arranz, Director General of Environment of La Junta de Castilla León. Buenos días eh, a todos. Fernando, muchas gracias, alcalde, restos de miembros de, de la mesa, señoras y señores. Bienvenidos a Ávila, bienvenidos a Castilla y León, bienvenidos a nuestra comunidad autónoma que acoge este eh, congreso. Y en primer lugar, yo quiero agradecer pues, a la a organización, en nombre de de Fernando, de, de Adrián Escudero y del resto de miembros del comité organizador, el que hayan elegido esta ciudad, el que hayan elegido esta región para celebrar este congreso. Eh, aparte de que ustedes puedan y estos días disfrutar de, de nuestra comunidad, eh, esperamos también eh, que eh, su presencia aquí, aparte de las sesiones teóricas que que eh, tendrá lugar en, en este magnífico auditorio, eh, puedan también eh, en los días de sus visitas al, al campo pues, disfrutar de lo que ofrece eh, Castilla y León. ¿no? Eh, yo quería, nada, muy brevemente en, en esta eh, inauguración, el hacer pues, unas breves reflexiones como... Eh, responsable de una administración gestora, gestora de recursos naturales y gestora eh, en general de la gestión del, del medio ambiente. ¿no? Y en este sentido eh, el, es necesario pues, señalar esa necesidad que desde el mundo de la administración, de la gestión de los recursos, se demanda 
eh, del de mundo científico que hoy está representado eh, eh, concretamente en este eh, mundo de la ecología por, por los aquí presentes. ¿no? En ese sentido existe cada vez más una mayor demanda de una sólida base científica que permita desde luego a los técnicos y, y a mayor escala pues a, a los políticos el tomar decisiones y tomar decisiones acertadas con sólidas bases fundadas en, en, en ese conocimiento que se pone un poco de manifiesto en congresos como el que, el que hoy se, se inicia. ¿no? Y en ese sentido, yo creo que los nuevos retos, los nuevos eh, enfoques de la gestión a las que nos vamos a enfrentar en este siglo que, que comienza, ¿no? que estamos en sus primeros eh, inicios, con retos tales como el cambio climático, la conservación de la biodiversidad, la gestión sostenible de nuestros recursos eh, naturales, como eh, uno de los grandes retos, entre otros, que que estos días se van a debatir aquí, eh, van a ser, eh, desde luego, de un gran interés y estaremos muy pendientes de las conclusiones que de aquí puedan salir y de esas recomendaciones eh, que seguro que no se olvidan de ellas también en, en, en ese enfoque también eh, práctico desde el estamento científico para que sirvan un poco de base para gestionar eh, estos recursos a los que antes eh, aludíamos. ¿no? Eh, por último, eh, señalar el, el interés de, de estos eh, foros eh, como base del intercambio del conocimiento. ¿no? Efectivamente, en la sociedad moderna en la que actualmente vivimos, parece que son las redes eh, sociales, eh, las redes informáticas las que eh, centran eh, el interés para este intercambio y estas demandas. ¿no? Quizá los que ya tenemos algún año más creemos que este tipo de congresos presenciales, donde el intercambio científico, pero también ese intercambio humano de experiencias, de compartir incluso más allá de las eh, horas densas eh, de las sesiones en el Congreso, el conocer a, a los compañeros eh, que se dedican a, a nuestra misma actividad eh, enriquecerá mucho también nuestra propia experiencia, eh, tanto científica, tanto de formación como, como personal. ¿no? Hace dos años, en el año 2009, tuvimos el honor de realizar también aquí el Congreso Forestal eh, Nacional y eh, ciertamente pues, eh, fue también tanto un éxito en las aportaciones como en la propia convivencia del, del Congreso que yo les, les deseo a todos ustedes. Y por último, eh, simplemente el insistirles en que nuestra aportación a este Congreso, que fundamentalmente eh, va a ser pues, en poderles eh, mostrar el día de, de la visita, que creo que es el miércoles, el jueves, ¿no? este jueves, eh, con visitas a, a dos de los más singulares espacios del de sistema central, ¿no? una de las cordilleras eh, eh, clásicas de esta comunidad autónoma, como son eh, el, eh, la Sierra de Gredos y la Sierra de Guadarrama, eh, pues esperemos que, que el jueves, que estos días puedan ustedes disfrutar, aparte de los paisajes, de que les podamos acercar un poco a los modelos eh, de gestión del territorio que estamos llevando en estos lugares, eh, fundamentalmente centrados en la gestión forestal, la gestión cinegética, la gestión de los espacios naturales protegidos, y donde podamos compartir con ustedes pues, esas dificultades que nos encontramos gestionando especies tan singulares y tan particulares en su gestión como el, el lobo ibérico o eh, las grandes rapaces carroñeras, ¿no? con grandes dificultades de gestión y que a veces pues, plantean problemas de gestión derivados de una toma de decisiones eh, política no muy acertada, quizá por un desconocimiento de su, del comportamiento eh, de estas especies. ¿no? 
eh, esperemos que les resulte de, de interés y se, que se vayan con una gran impresión de nuestra comunidad y que el trabajo de estos días sea muy provechoso. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you very much for your words and nice wishes for all of us. And now is the turn for the mayor of Fabula, uh, Angel García. Thank you. Buenos días. Good morning. Uh, señor director general del Medio Natural y Política Forestal del Ministerio de Medio Ambiente y Medio Rural y Marino. Señor director general del Medio Natural de la Junta de Castilla y León. Señor presidente de la Federación Europea de Ecología, presidenta de la Sociedad Portuguesa de Ecología, señor director de Sostenibilidad de la Agencia de Organización de Congresos y señor presidente de la Asociación Española de Ecología Terrestre. Señoras y señores, quiero darles a todos ustedes la bienvenida a la ciudad de Ávila. Esta ciudad está declarada, como ustedes bien conocen, por la UNESCO Ciudad Patrimonio de la Humanidad, y por lo tanto están ustedes en su ciudad, es de todos, es de toda la humanidad y por tanto también es de ustedes. Es un honor para Ávila acoger en estas instalaciones del Centro Municipal de Exposiciones y Congresos Lienzo Norte la celebración del decimosegundo Congreso Europeo de Ecología, una reunión del más alto nivel científico que nos convierte por unos días en la capital de Europa en cuanto a asuntos ecológicos se refiere. Aquí se van a dar cita representantes de más de 50 países, 54 países, para ser exactos, a todos eh, los cuales les doy la más efusiva bienvenida. Quiero agradecer a los responsables del Congreso, la Asociación Española de Ecología Terrestre, la elección de Ávila como sede de este encuentro internacional tan relevante. Un evento que además está acompañado por la celebración del décimo Congreso Nacional de la Asociación Mencionada y del tercer Congreso Ibérico de Ecología, este último en colaboración con la Sociedad Portuguesa de Ecología. Les deseo a todos lo mejor en su estancia entre nosotros. Esta ciudad milenaria y misteriosa estoy convencido que les dejará un recuerdo imborrable. Están en su casa. Vuelvan ustedes cuando quieran. Durante estos días van a abordar cuestiones de especial relevancia científica en una edición cuyo enfoque se centraliza en el análisis del cambio global y en la búsqueda de actuaciones para paliar sus efectos, promoviendo la transmisión de conocimientos e investigaciones recientes en el terreno de la ecología. La ciudad de Ávila no solo posee unas infraestructuras magníficas para la celebración de esta reunión, sino tiene también un entorno medioambiental bien conservado y protegido que constituye un atractivo más para su estancia entre nosotros y que como paisaje se une a las bellezas histórico-artísticas de una ciudad con profundas raíces en el pasado pero que busca, a través de la sostenibilidad, un lugar en el mundo actual. Aquí, lo comentábamos al comienzo, el campo está al alcance de la mano y el medio ambiente urbano es de muy alta calidad. Espero que en Ávila encuentren el clima adecuado para su trabajo, pero también para el ocio. Les invito a disfrutar de la ciudad y, por supuesto, de nuestro mejor patrimonio, de lo mejor que tenemos, que sin duda no son otros que los propios abulenses. Estoy convencido de que aquí encontrarán la ciudad adecuada para todo ello. Recuerden que siempre les vamos a estar esperando con los brazos abiertos y ofrecer, porque comentábamos también al principio las posibilidades de organización de otros eventos, ofrecer, como no, esta ciudad para cualquier evento de futuro que pudiera ser organizado. Welcome to Ávila. Thank you very much. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you very much for your nice words and good wishes. We probably will feel very nice, very comfortable in this small size town of Avila. And now is the time for the president of the Federation of Ecology, of European Federation of Ecology, Stefan Klotz. Dear members of the Honorary Committee, dear members of the Scientific Committee, and of course also dear members of the Organizing Committee, 
dear colleagues from the Spanish and Portuguese Ecological Society, dear, uh, dear participants of the 12th EEF Congress. I'm very glad to welcome you to the 12th European Ecological Federation Congress. Many will remember that in previous years EEF meetings have been known as European Ecological Congresses OIRECO. We are still in line with this tradition, we only changed the name. Our Congresses became a very good forum for scientific exchange and are giving an excellent overview on the progress of ecology in Europe. Up to now, we had our Congresses once within three years. From this year onwards, EF meetings will be held once every two years and we will continue to organize our conferences as joint congresses with our member organizations as well as with other international ecological societies like INTECOL. Over the last years, the congresses increased in scientific quality and science. Our conferences became important meetings for European ecologists, a place for scientific exchange and symposia demonstrating European-wide scientific projects. We will continue this growth with the EEF Congresses. The title of our Congress, uh, at this Congress, Responding to Rapid Environmental Change, reflects the fact that ecologists are meeting one of the great challenges of our present time. How to deal with impact of global change on ecosystems. The EEF is most grateful to the Spanish and Portuguese Association of Ecologists and of course to the City of Avila and the Ministry of Environment of Spain for hosting the 2011 Congress that promises to be an excellent meeting advancing the science of ecology in Europe and uh, bring the very best scientific minds together to consider how ecology can contribute uh, to tackling many of the challenges faced by society and the environment across the globe. More than 30 sessions will reflect many aspects of modern ecology. For the first time, we will have an education forum uh, chaired by Anders Bali. To bring results of our research into public is a major challenge and of high importance for the whole society and for us as ecologists too. I want to thank all colleagues for the organization of this forum. For the first time too, we awarded the Ernst Haeckel Prize. Ernst Haeckel was the father of ecology as a new science. He first time used the term ecology uh, to describe the functioning of our living world. The prize is designed to honor uh, senior ecologists for an outstanding contribution to European ecological science. With this conference, we want to establish this new tradition. We follow the tradition started in Leipzig three years ago and award the Students European Ecology Prize to honor the best oral contribution presented by a student participant. Abstracts submitted to the Congress by students as first author and presenter have been pre-reviewed by a committee of the EEF and a selected number of talks will be evaluated by the committee members during our Congress. Last not least, within this year, we relaunched our journal Web Ecology as an open access journal. Web Ecology is an electronic peer-reviewed journal issued by the European Ecological Federation in cooperation with uh, OICOS editorial office in Lund, Sweden, and restarting 2011 by Copernicus Publications uh, from Göttingen, Germany. As the EF official journal, ecologists from all over Europe and, as a matter of fact, from all countries of the world are invited to publish original results on its pages. With the uh, relaunch, we want to develop web ecology as a well-accepted peer-reviewed journal for studies and reviews uh, from all fields of ecology, theoretical and empirical, pure and applied. I wish us all an outstanding Congress with many good talks and discussions and many new ideas for cooperation and new projects. Many thanks.
thank you also for these uh, words and inspiring ideas. Now is the time for Elena Freitas, the president of the Portuguese uh, society. I will be, I will be very, very brief. Um, once more, science managed to bring together ecologists from all, all over Europe and many other countries. It seems that somehow we are doing a better job than our European politicians. En español, en castellano, en mi castellano, me gustaría agradecer a las autoridades, en mi particular al municipio de Ávila, por la invitación, bueno, por, por nos recibir en, en una ciudad que es tan especial, que la reconozco desde siempre, que fue además la ciudad de, una, de Santa Teresa de Ávila, que es una personalidad que todos deberíamos conocer un poco como científicos también, porque de alguna manera era una científica en su forma de estar. Agradezco también a la Asociación Española de Ecología Terrestre por la oportunidad de, de colaborar con la, con la ASPECO en este congreso. Una vez más demostramos que la ciencia no tiene fronteras y nuestra área aún menos. En el nombre de la Portuguese Ecological Society, I wish you all a very fruitful meeting and happy meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for your words and this idea of uh, science having no frontiers, which I think it is very, very interesting and very true. And now uh, is a turn for Guy Bigwood. He's the responsible for sustainability and the person who ended up convinced us on, on the need to make a congress like this with the smallest footprint, uh, environmental footprint possible. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. President, I'm in here, Mr. Mayor, fellow colleagues here up on stage. Um, do we have a little? Great, let's, um, that one right? That one there. Okay, good stuff. Okay, good. I'm going to here. Good. Okay, good. Well, I've broken everything already, so let's start from here. So, um, you guys are all experts in, in ecology. You're working on some amazing projects. But at times, when we come together and we organize these type of meetings, we're not in unison. We're not aligned with the words you're preaching and the actions we're following. So, we had a discussion as a, as a, a committee and decided that this event should be organized in a little different way, in a more sustainable way. Entonces estamos diciendo que, que tenemos que organizar este congreso de una manera más sostenible para alinearnos un poco con los mensajes del evento. And so um, I just wanted to share a few of those things that we're, what we're doing about. And um, I think these are just the first steps. There's a long way to go and I, I challenge the organization um, to be considering this in, in not only today's event more, but into the future events. And so that we leave a smaller impact um, economically, a bigger impact financially to the cities we go to, and a better impact for the people around us. Unfortunately, esta es una ciudad en, en España y que muchos eventos no cuidan mucho los impactos de los eventos. Es un big congress, es un medical congress, and there was tons and tons of waste. Tons and tons of waste that go into landfill, that affect the water systems, that affect uh, the natural systems, of which you guys are much more aware than I am. Y tenemos que cambiar. No, es, no podemos seguir de la misma manera. Aquí yo veo una... Uh, on a pedido de dinero, it's a waste of money and it's crazy. So, you know, when we started to look at this, we worked out that an average kind of person, um, you guys, normally waste about three kilos of waste. It's a big bag of waste in a typical Congress. So we made a commitment to, um, to reduce that by three, by 50%. 
So you see a lot of recycling bins outside, and we're really changing the way that recycling is done in this facility here. So please help us with that. So you know, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to use the, the classical system of reutilizar, reutilizar, reciclar. And the last thing we're trying to do is, is report. So we're trying to do, have a much more scientific approach of measuring the impacts and, and reducing those and offsetting those and reporting on them. So we're trying to divert 50% of the waste at least from landfill to other forms. We should be able to do much better than that with your help. Um, as you know, flying has a, 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 is about 80 to 90 percent of the impacts of, um, of carbon emissions of an event like this. So um, when you put an event in a place like Avila, you, reduce, you have a chance to reduce it considerable. So just by choosing the city, we think we reduce the impact about 30 um, percent. We'll work that out later, but we're around 30 percent. And now we want to go the next step and reduce it by at least an additional 10 percent and then offset um, at least 50% of, of those emissions. So they're saying that choosing a city like Avila, this is a very important step to reduce the waste of carbon. And so, so that's the first thing we did. Working with a place like this um, and, um, and the efforts we've made to really tweak the way they manage their energy um, is making a big impact too. Okay. So I think um, they say a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So we spent a lot of time focusing on the food here. And we wanted to give you a really local, good um, culinary experience. Um, so we focused on something we call floss, making sure the food's fresh, local, organic, sustainable, and seasonal. So what you will eat, over 90% of that will be from the Avila region. Más que 90% de la comida que vamos a comer está aquí. Uh, there's much, a lot of organics, um, and there's some great things. We've had a lot of fun working with farmers and people like that to try and do something a little bit different. So uh, we're way beyond our target for that. Um, so we will do a report. This is just to show you that uh, the second bar in is EEF, and these are um, other events where we've, we've measured other ecological events. And so you can see by the second bar in from the left that um, we're not as good as some of the other big um, environmental events. The one on the left is the COP15 event, climate change event. But we're much better than other ones. So this is just to say we've really improved our performance. We're at 47% now of our possible total score. Um, but we've got a long way to go. And um, uh, you know, this chart, you can't see it really at the back, but it helps us to understand these are the different areas, hotels, accommodation, the venue, transportation. It's a scientific, structured approach that we have to, to measuring and, and improving the impact. So you can see that in some areas we're doing great, some areas we're not doing very well. And so um, we'll be capturing the learning and, and sharing it for future events. Okay, so we need your help, so please help us onto that. And one of the most important things you can help us with is... Um, is to help us offset your impacts. Here's a box. Okay, here's a box. I'm looking for two things. You will be given one of these. This is a voting form. I'm now going to tell you of three th projects um, of which we, as an organization, will donate a certain amount of money to offset the impacts of this event. So we would like you to take these and put them in one of the three boxes, four boxes that you will see outside. The four projects are, number one, it's a project in uh, the Amazon. Not sure if you've heard, but they are connecting uh, Peru to Brazil with a transoceanic road. It's now completed. Um, and um, this is causing a lot more damage to the, to the rainforest. Uh, through illegal deforestation. So one of the projects is to, to protect a large area of over 300,000 hectares called the Madre de Dios uh, Amazon project. And so that's one of the projects. So if you choose that one, then we will donate uh, money to this project. The second one is working with uh, Fundación Vincent Ferrer that if you're Spanish you would have heard, heard about. It's uh, a guy who started a project 50 years ago to, um, to work with the, 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 the Dalits and the untouchable caste in India, in the south of in India. And um, they have severe water issues there. So this is not a carbon project so much, or 
It's much more around water, protecting water and helping save, multiply and share water efficiency. So here this project's about building micro irrigation systems to, to water the fields, okay, and then teach them about organic farming. The second one, again from Fundación Ferrer, is a wetland project. So this is about building natural, um, what would you call it, waste treatment. La gestión de residuos, de aguas grises, pero usando sistemas naturales. And so this project builds natural wetlands um, and will handle over 250,000 liters of dirty grey water every day. So fantastic project. And then the last one is in uh, Ecuador. This is a wonderful place called El Yusuni, gorgeous place um, in the Ecuador Amazon basin. And um, it's got one of the largest reserves of oil um, in South America. And um, not surprisingly, a lot of the uh, large petroleum companies want to extract that, which would mean massive damage to the forest. So um, the Ecuador government wants to protect that, and they're looking for help um, to protect it and look for alternative ways of, um, of using the forest. So. Uh, this project, if you decide to choose it, you will be funding um, renewable energy projects, reforestation projects, and sustainable education projects. So, you've got one of these, you put it in there. The other thing you can do is some of you have kindly, about 10%, 20% of you have kindly put, made a donation already. If not, you can get this out of your pocket and put it in here. And you can make a donation. Um, and what we think that... Uh, as the mayor said, we're, we're at home now. You know, we're we're in we're working together. We're in a place, and so as as global brethren, it's our opportunity to to give back a little bit to other people that don't have the resources that we do in a lot of our European countries. So uh, please join us to sort the projects. Please help us to do what you can um, for this project. And um, thank you very much. for this introduction to what sustainability could be when you arrange a lot of people and you make a meeting like that. Well, it's, it's time for, for me to just to wrap up and, and almost uh, start with the, with the whole thing. When we were invited to, or we were challenged by the Federation to arrange this, this big meeting, we didn't know what it was. We knew that it was a challenge, but we didn't know how many things were involved, how many people we should in involve, how much money was involved. We think we survived, but uh, the key was to involve a lot of friends and colleagues. Uh, without the help of hundreds of people, uh, probably this could never have been possible. People from all kinds. You will see people with green t-shirts around. They are volunteers. They are to help you and to help us, but we need your help all over the, the Congress, not, not only for the things that Guy already mentioned regarding recycling and, 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 and conserving the, the, the infrastructures and, and, and helping in many little things, but also to participate actively and to take the most out of this opportunity. We, we have a dense agenda for these three days. That was a, a puzzle for us to, to arrange. But uh, you are offered 36 sessions, spanning from very theoretical ones to more applied ones. Uh, you, you, you have at your hand six plenary sessions, two per day. And combined with this, there are several social activities uh, some of you, if you run to the registration desk, you can register for a walk uh, uh, through the city of Avila. That actually was one of the things that the mayor and the city hall offered and contributed. You are also invited to join in the Thursday's uh, excursions to the surroundings, to the central system, Sierra de Guadarrama Mountains. Uh, there is a reception get-together uh, activity tonight. There are many other little parallel uh, meetings, especially on, on Tuesday, and I think this, the, the success of all of these will depend on, on, your, on your participation. 
So when we arranged this, we, we knew that we wanted to have key scientists and active uh, ecologists from as many um, countries as possible. But we didn't expect to have uh, to, to be able to involve uh, people from 54 countries. Obviously, this is a European Congress, and we expected to be mostly European, and it is mostly European, but we have people from Arab countries, African countries, as far as Australia, Uruguay, uh, Chile, and, and many others. Obviously, most of us are from Spain. Uh, obviously, there is this distance factor, but uh, we, the Spaniards account for around 380, but there are almost 100 of French, and there are, as I told you, scientists from, from many, many countries. And this is, I think, one of the first symptoms of uh, success, at least in, in, in calling the, the attention of the international societies and, and, and groups of, of ecologists. And we are also involving the, the media. We want to have some press releases. We, we have a web page, and we have blogs, and we have uh, we have tried also to involve uh, the social networks. Uh, we will see how successful we are. We are experiencing many things for the first time. The whole thing of sustainability is a first thing, uh, a first experience, and a first, uh, the first time one of these things is done in, 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 for most of us in, in, in Spain. And we will see how it works. And again, with your help, it, it, it can be a success. There are many things I, I, I could tell you, uh, but uh, it's better to be brief and probably at this time is basically to express our uh, grateful feelings and our acknowledgements. There are some sponsors that made possible these events. Obviously, the inscription of the participants paid most of the expenses, but there are additional expenses that were covered and the activities that I mentioned were possible to be offered to you thanks to a number of sponsors. For instance, there are foundations like Biodiversity or Fundación Biodiversidad or the Ministry of uh, Science and Innovation in, in Spain. The University Rey Juan Carlos also contributed, uh, Gas Natural Fenosa, Ferrovial, the, the City Hall of Avila. They were the, the main sponsors. But there are also several others that you can have the whole list there, including the Journal of Ecography or Laboratories de Cabón or Junta Castilla León. They were very helpful with us arranging, for instance, the discussions of Thursday. And I think the list will, will, will probably continue and continue. But I think we, we have to be very grateful to especially two persons, because eventually everything comes to persons. Uh, we can talk about societies, foundations, ministries, or whatever, but eventually it's people, it's about people. And there are two persons that were key and has been key and probably will continue to be key for some days at least. And one is Adrián Escudero, who is the vice president of the Spanish Association for Terrestrial Ecology, and the other one is Leire, the secretary. Both of them were heavily involved from the beginning in the coordination of everything and actually were key in, in making this uh, participative uh, uh, working group and an organizing committee. So with these words, I, I just want to again express uh, my gratitude to all of you. Uh, muchas gracias a todos los miembros de la, de la mesa, a todas las sociedades que, que he mencionado. Hay muchas cosas que, que decir, pero la brevedad creo que es eh, a veces muy bien recibida. Así que con estas palabras en, en español pues, eh, concluyo la, la ceremonia de inauguración y declaramos entre todos, yo creo, eh, pues el comienzo de estas, de estas jornadas. Thank you to all of you. If you see the program, we are doing pretty well. Uh, this was one of the challenges, actually, to have all of us on time. We managed to do it, and we want to continue this way, and we will ask all the conveners to stay on time. There are many, many sessions, many, many talks. Please be o'clock, try to be sharp in your timings. And we will have now 15 minutes of a mini break to finish some of the inscriptions, and then we will have the first plenary sessions here in this room at 10.15. Thank you.